been searching down every dead end road. The only treasure it's from me ain't nothing but fool's gold. I'm gonna start a Celtic ring knife project for a buddy of mine at work. He's waited very patiently, and uh, I told him I would make this for him. And uh, I'm gonna make it out of leaf spring. Uh, that's a very big piece there. Obviously, this is a smaller piece. I already cut down, kind of, uh, to a, a smaller piece of stock to start forging on. I just cut it down with my bandsaw. So, anyhow, let's go ahead and get started forging. In light of my last project ending up with a bit of a crack in it that I had to forge well back together, I think I'm just going to be very diligent this time to relieve the stresses in the metal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and anneal this, fully anneal it, before I do any serious forging on it. I have a tendency to just start beating on hot steel just to, to get it started. But just so you know, there is a strategy in mind, and that is to elongate this piece as long as I can. The width is about what I'm going to want it to be to start making the knife, but it needs to be much longer and much thinner. And then the big question is, do I forge the ring end of the handle first, or do I forge the blade end first? And I'm still working that out. So I'm not worried about the exact length of this, so I'm not measuring as I go. I'm just trying to get a decent length chopper style blade on this Celtic ring knife. I want to be able to pop through some two by fours like it's nothing. And I look forward to the testing phase when we're all done. <laughs> Okay, so I've got it uh, about the length I want. If it goes longer, cool. If not, that's cool too. I've got it the approximate width I want it. A little concerned that the tang end is a little bit thinner than I wanted it. But uh, now I'm going to try to isolate some material so that I can draw out a long enough portion and a thick enough piece anyway that I can wrap around. And I think I even want to make the ring part look kind of like a dragon neck and head. I saw one similar to that on Instagram. I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm capable of doing that with my skill set, but I really want to try. All right, so I think I'm going to uh, stop for now because uh, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this dragon. <laughs> Oh 
I'll deal with that later. Okay, so I'm not uh, I'm not super impressed with where this is uh, going right now. I'm gonna have to make some changes. So as you look at this here uh, blade, I mean obviously I've got to do more up here, but uh, this tang right here, the ring is just too big. I think proportionally to the rest of it, the uh, scrolling work I tried to do here really did not work out uh, the way I thought it would. I don't like it. So I'm gonna trim that off with a bandsaw and uh, and then just probably draw that ring out a little more and fold it on to this spot right here on the back of this to give the tang the shape that I'm looking for. Anyways, here goes. Well, that was a reasonably productive forging session. We're getting closer to what I'm looking to get. I decided to make a mushroomed guard here because I felt like it would be better at protecting the finger and look interesting. So I forged that little bit of guard action in there. Okay, so I'm done with the uh, profiling of this blade. I'm kind of digging it. I like how this is going. Getting excited.
Okay, so I got a quick note here. My 4x36 is not going to be the best tool to bevel this one. Uh, the surface area of the 4 inches wide is just, it's just too wide. So I uh, did a couple of practice runs with this just to see with the, uh, the 1x42 that I have. And it's doing a much better job of uh, taking care of this because I have a slight radius here. Um, it's uh, the 4x36 is just too straight across here and it doesn't bevel it evenly. The 1x42, uh, rather, I think is going to do a pretty good job. Um, also, uh, I have a little table uh, on my 1x42. I think that's going to help me get these uh, Ricasso plunge line areas a little more consistent side to side. So, here goes. Well, due to the fact that my uh, quench tank is a bit too small for this knife, uh, I've decided to kind of makeshift a quenching trough full of uh, canola oil. So hopefully that will cool it down enough quickly that we'll get the proper hardness that we want out of this blade. So we'll see. Okay, so I know you can't really see through that old dirty toaster oven, but I put the knife in there and temper it back at about 450 degrees for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and uh, see what the color looks like. If I get the little bit of a straw color I'm looking for, that will have tempered it back enough to make it less brittle now that it's hardened. Uh, it does have the kind of straw color on there that I was looking for. Not sure if you can see it, but it's definitely there in the areas where I uh, rubbed off the uh, baked on oil with the file. But uh, pretty happy, except I made uh, a cardinal error. I hardened this blade before I laid out the holes that I needed for the tang <laughs> and uh, for the wooden scales. So I, I replayed back the footage and it looks like some of the heat did get back beyond the Ricazo in the handle area, so there's the potential for this to be too hard to get the drill through there. That should draw it back enough, hopefully, so I can now drill holes. Just hope it didn't ruin my finish. to 1200 grit.
Well, due to this <clears throat> mushroom guard I've got here where I mushroomed that bit out, uh, it's going to be very complicated to match up the holes I put in the tang with the uh, handle scales. So I put some leather in between here, that piece and that little piece there. Hopefully to keep it level while I try to start these holes. Okay. Well, I think that is probably a good start to this handle. Um, I just am going to need, I think I'm going to need some uh, black construction paper liner though going between the steel and the wood. Okay, so what you didn't see is I cut out eight pieces of construction paper, black construction paper, four for each side. And also, I went ahead and textured this tang and drilled a couple of through holes uh, in addition for epoxy migration. So uh, I didn't really want to reduce the weight of the handle on this one because it's already going to be really forward heavy. But uh, yeah, I had to drill a couple of extra holes just, just to get the epoxy from one side to the other. Beautiful. Look at that wood. Look at that. That is beautiful. So just about done with this blade and that handle came out real nice. I was saving that for a special project and uh, ended up using it for this. Second time through the two by four. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Cried out to Jesus, I say, forgive my soul.